Hello. I am the webmaster of Cathodos.com. This video series is going to be a discussion about earliest Buddhism. I am a metaphysician and philosopher and have spent countless thousands of hours translating the original ancient Pali of earliest Buddhism before any sects, any dogmas existed. We're not going to be discussing commentaries, what my teacher said, what my guru said, or commentators books. Specifically, we're going to be discussing Anatta Anatman, the so-called no-soul doctrine of Buddhism, which actually does not exist in earliest doctrine. It is a via negativa methodology for discussing what the Atman is not. A, B, C, D, F, G are not myself, not my soul. This is not a negation of the soul. This via negativa methodology is found not only in Advaita Vedanta, but is found all throughout early Christian mysticism and Gnosticism. It is a means of coming to synthesis or reassimilation with the self or the soul. We're going to be discussing what earliest Buddhism did and didn't, did not teach. Specifically, I'm going to get lay out for you, using abductive reasoning and logic, what doctrine does and does not say. Ultimately, all religious debates are doctrinally debased. We cannot say, my teacher said, my guru said, commentator X said, religion X said, be it Theravada, Mahayana, Zen, or any other form of so-called Buddhism, which is, after all, post-fact to the earliest original article that we have. Lacking a time machine and being able to go back and talk to Gautama himself, the earliest doctrine of Buddhism, which predates any and all sects, even the Theravadins, are of the suttas. We're talking specifically the Nikayas, the Dega Nikaya, the Majima, the Samyutta, and the Anguttara and the Kudaka Nikaya, the five collections. These collections are mentioned on the Ashoka edicts of King Ashok in ancient India. We know therefore that earliest Buddhism as found in the five Nikayas predates any and all sects, i.e. the Saravastavadins, who later became the Theravadins, the yellow robe monks that we now know from India, Laos, Burma, Thailand, etc. We're going to be discussing earliest Buddhism. Egotistically, as it may sound, I am an expert on earliest Buddhism. I am a Buddhologist. There is no person alive throughout history, be it Kumaraswamy, C.A.F. Rees Davids, or others, who have examined the earliest doctrine of Buddhism and have concluded that what passes as Buddhism today is absolutely not Buddhism. As Dr. A.K. Kumaraswamy most famously said, Buddhism is most famous today for everything it originally never taught. In the following video series, we're going to be discussing various topics of Buddhism. For mostly, we're going to be discussing right off about Anatta and Anatman in the next video clip. That there is no negation of the Atman or the soul in the doctrine of Buddhism. I know every occurrence of this word, of there are 662 of which, there is never, nowhere, and no way a negation of the soul of the Atman in Buddhism. In fact, the soul is the only refuge, is the light, the Deepa. Atasarana, Nanasarana. The soul is a refuge without any other refuge. There are two selves, two souls, as spoken of in all forms of Platonism, metaphysics, and earliest Buddhism. The corporeal self made up of Rupa, Vedana, Sana, Sankara, and Vinyana, i.e. the five khandas. The psychophysical self, the empirical self, made it of piss, urine, blood, feces, flesh, etc. The fate of that self, that soul, is never in question. Its fate is always death, always the grave. There are always two selves spoken of in metaphysics and early mysticism. The empirical self, whose fate ultimately rests in the grave. And there is the ontological self, the soul, the light, the deeper within. Or, as Buddhism refers to it, as the Sarati, the charioteer. Atavasarati, the self is charioteer. Not the psychophysical self, but the Atman self. The five khandas are referred to as the five horses. Specifically, we'll get into this topic on a later video. I just want to lay out for you that myself, as webmaster of Cathodos.com, we're going to be laying out through logic and abductive reasoning, and specifically doctrinal citations, and what logically follows, what Buddhism earliest, original Buddhism, did and did not teach. We're not going to be using commentary, and we're not going to be using conjecture, and we're not going to be discussing Theravada, we're not going to be discussing Mahayana, we're not going to be discussing Zen, we're not going to be discussing any sects, any later dogmas which came after the fact. Let's find out what Buddhism did or did not teach. I've spent countless thousands of hours and have sacrificed endless years of my life researching this earliest topic. Dry, boring as that may be, I've made many revelations, and I'm going to lay out some of them for you. Some of them you'll find very fascinating. And this information exists nowhere else on earth, and I'm going to lay it out for you.
I hope you enjoy it.